You know, like when your computer decides to like totally crash, right? When you're trying to meet a deadline, you just want to scream. Oh, yeah, yeah. We've all been there, right? It seems like you are so ready to just tackle this whole stress thing. Absolutely. And we are here to help you deep dive into that. Yeah. We're looking at a couple of your d documents about stress. Okay. What it is, what causes it, how to manage it. Right. And get this, we're going to uncover how much of this whole stress thing is like all in our heads. It's true. You've probably heard the saying, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. But when it comes to stress, it's more like it's not what happens to you, but how you perceive it. OK, I'm intrigued, but let's maybe back up a bit, I think. Right. Both of these sources, What is Stress, by Counselor Shalu Alante and this uh, this article on stress in the modern world. They both mention some pretty relatable, I think, signs of stress, yeah. like feeling constantly keyed up or uh, that knot in your stomach before you have to give a big presentation or even just like being really snappy at people you love. Absolutely. Yeah. We often brush these off as just life, oh, right? Yeah. But they're actually our body's way of saying, hey, Something's not right here. So it's like our body's internal alarm system kind of going off. Exactly. It's our hardwired response to perceived threats. Okay. It's a holdover from like our cave dwelling ancestors. Oh, wow. You know, picture a saber toothed tiger, okay. right? Your nervous system kicks into gear. It's releasing hormones like adrenaline, cortisol. Right. And boom, you're ready to either fight that tiger or run away really, really fast. That's the fight or flight response. Okay. But I mean, most of us aren't you know, facing down saber toothed tigers these days. True. That's true. Right. right. It's more like, you know, a mountain of emails or just a to do list that never ends. Exactly. Right. And yet our bodies often react in the same way. Wow. That rush of adrenaline that helped our ancestors, you know, survive a tiger. Right. Might just leave us feeling anxious and jittery in a meeting. Oh yeah. And cortisol, often called the stress hormone, can actually be helpful. Okay. In small doses, it gives us that boost of energy to tackle challenges. So cortisol is like that extra shot of espresso in the morning. Precisely. But just like too much espresso can leave you feeling wired. Yeah. Right? Chronically elevated cortisol can have some not so fun side effects. Like what? Trouble sleeping, mood swings, even a weakened immune system. Wow. So it's not just in our heads. This stress thing is actually impacting our bodies. That is. Like physically. But if our bodies are hardwired to react this way, how do we... I don't know. How do we gain control over it? That's where things get really interesting. Well, the physical response is pretty universal. What triggers that response varies widely from person to person. Mm -hmm. And that's where perception comes in. Lilanti highlights this in their guide. They have a section called uh, Stress Fact, which I thought was really interesting. They break down these stressful events into four categories, right? Unfamiliar, unexpected, unpredictable, and uncontrollable. Right. What might be exhilarating for one person, say, public speaking. Yeah. Yeah. Might send another person into like a full blown panic attack. Yeah. It all boils down to how we interpret the situation, our individual perception. Yeah. It's like one person's trash is another person's treasure. Right. Exactly. And that's a really important point, I think, because it highlights this fact that, you know, we're not just victims of circumstance here. Right. Like we actually have a say in how we experience these things. Which is incredibly empowering. But like, how do we actually shift our perception? Like if I like see a mountain of work, right? And my brain just like, you know, goes danger, <laughs> danger. Like how do I convince it to like chill out and see it as a challenge? That's where the how to manage stress section from Lou Alante's guide uh, I, I comes in handy. OK. There's some really interesting techniques in there. Things like uh, hypnotherapy, visualization. Even just like making sure you're getting enough sleep. Okay, I have to admit, some of those sound a little out there. Right. Like hypnotherapy. Can someone really be hypnotized into like not being stressed anymore? Well, it's not quite as mystical as it sounds. Okay. Hypnotherapy is really about guiding you into this deeply relaxed state where you're more open to suggestion. And in that state, you can start to challenge those negative thought patterns. And kind of like reframe your perception of things. So it's like hitting the uh, reset button on your brain's stress response. Exactly. And visualization works in a similar way. Okay. Instead of like dwelling on, you know, worst case scenarios, visualization encourages you to create 
mental images of yourself, like successfully navigating these situations. Oh, I've heard of athletes using visualization like to improve their performance. Like, they like are... they'll picture themselves, you know, crossing the finish line or, um, you know, making that winning shot or whatever. Right. And the same principle can be applied to managing stress. So by like repeatedly visualizing yourself handling a stressful presentation with confidence, you're essentially training your brain to respond differently. So you're giving your brain like a mental rehearsal. Yes. I love that. Okay, what about some of the more, uh, I don't know, accessible techniques? Yeah. Like what about this whole getting enough sleep thing? Right. I mean, we all know we should be getting enough sleep, but like how does that actually help with stress? You're right. It's often easier said than done, but it's crucial for managing stress because when we're sleep deprived, our bodies produce more cortisol. Mm. And remember, that's our stress hormone. Right, so not only are we dealing with like whatever the initial stressor was, but our sleep deprived brain is basically just like dumping gasoline on the fire. Precisely. Oh. And it becomes this vicious cycle because, you know, stress can also interfere with our sleep. Right, right. So when we're stressed, our minds race, right? Right. Making it difficult to fall asleep and stay asleep. It's like a double whammy. Exactly. And it's not just about the quantity of sleep, but the quality. Oh, okay. And this is where Luanti's tips about, you know, creating a relaxing bedtime routine, I think, are helpful. Like avoiding those late night Netflix binges that leave you feeling like wired and tired. Exactly. It's about creating a calming pre-sleep routine. Okay. You know, dimming the lights, putting away screens, maybe reading a book, taking a warm bath, mm. anything that, you know, helps signal to your body and mind that it's time to wind down. So it's like creating a more mindful approach to sleep. Absolutely. Okay. And mindfulness in general mm -hmm. is a really powerful tool for, uh, you know, for managing stress. Right. Lulante actually talks about incorporating mindfulness into everyday activities, like even yeah. just reading their guide. Wait, what? How do you, how do you practice mindfulness while reading a guide about stress? That seems very meta, even for me. It's simpler than you think. Lou Alente suggests focusing on the phrase, I am reading about how to manage my stress. And by like repeating this phrase as you read, you're bringing your attention to the present moment, to the act of reading itself, rather than letting your mind wander to all the things that are stressing you out. So it's like gently guiding your thoughts back to the present moment. Exactly. Kind of like meditation. Exactly. And the more you practice mindfulness, whether it's through meditation, focus breathing exercises, even just paying attention to the sensations of like washing the dishes or taking a walk, you're training your brain to stay present and resist those kind of stress inducing thought spirals. So it's like building a mental muscle. Precisely. For managing stress. It's about developing that ability to observe your thoughts and feelings without judgment. Yeah which helps create a sense of space between you and your stress. Okay, this is all great stuff. Yeah. But I have to admit, I'm I'm feeling a little overwhelmed. There are so many different techniques. Hypnotherapy, visualization, mindfulness, sleep hygiene. Where do we even begin? It's like we've opened this treasure chest of stress-busting tools, but now I'm like, ah, oh, I don't know which one to grab first. I hear that. And that's yeah. totally normal, right? Yeah. It's like trying to choose from a menu that has like way too many good options. Right, right. Sometimes the choice can be paralyzing, you know? Yeah. My advice is start small. Okay. So instead of trying to like overhaul my entire life, maybe just pick one or two things and, and like focus on those. Exactly. And, and choose something that really resonates with you. You know, like mm -hmm. don't force yourself to meditate if you know you're just going to end up feeling like restless and frustrated right maybe you start with like just a really simple breathing exercise each morning okay or you incorporate a 20 minute walk into your lunch break something like that so it's about it's about finding what works for you not you know what works for some uh you know guru on a mountaintop somewhere precisely we're all different right <laughs> yeah, so it makes sense that our approaches to stress management are going to be different too yeah yeah the key is to experiment and see what helps you feel you know more grounded yeah more centered more able to like you know deal with whatever life throws at you right and it's okay if it takes a little trial and error absolutely and remember you know this isn't about being perfect yeah you know there will be days when like you forget to breathe oh yeah when that deadline you know sends you spiraling yeah all you want to do is <laughs> curl up in a ball with a pint of ice cream <laughs> and that's okay so we give ourselves permission to be human even, Even when we're like stressed out humans. <laughs> exactly. We're not aiming for a life completely devoid of stress because 
let's face it, that's about as realistic as, I don't know, finding a unicorn riding a roller coaster. Right. Stress is a normal part of life. Yeah. It's about finding healthy ways to navigate those kind of inevitable stressful moments. Yeah. It's like they say, you know, it's not about avoiding the storm. It's about learning to dance in the rain. I love that. Right. It's about shifting from a state of feeling overwhelmed and reactive to a place of feeling, you know, empowered. Yeah. Equipped to like, you know, handle whatever comes your way. Right. And that's a skill that takes practice, uh. you know, just like learning to dance. This deep dive has been incredible. I mean, we've covered so much ground. We have. From, you know, the science behind our stress response to like how much power our own perception has in shaping our experience of stress. And we've even explored some really practical techniques to like manage stress and reclaim our sense of calm and the best part is this is just the beginning right right the more we understand about stress and you know how it affects us the better equipped we are to manage it and who knows maybe we even reach a point where we can like appreciate stress for what it is okay you know yeah a sign that we're engaged in life that we're pushing our boundaries that we're growing okay now that's a perspective shift i think i can get behind so as we wrap up this deep dive on stress we want to leave you with this final thought lou Alente's guide includes this like really comprehensive list of common stressors you know in both our work and our personal lives so as you go about your day today we encourage you to maybe take a look at that list ask yourself are there any areas in your life where maybe you could benefit from a little stress management remember it's not about like eliminating stress entirely it's about you know finding those healthy ways to cope and adapt and ultimately to thrive even amidst life's inevitable challenges <laughs>